Good morning.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Ma'olah as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah, and became his servant. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Is Psalm 16, which can be found in your bulletin. We will read the psalm responsively by whole verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. We will you will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But you are, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of our Savior. I speak to you in the name and the love and the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning, everyone. So in um, Steve Plank's recent letter, very heartfelt and moving letter to the parish on concluding his 25 years of uh, serving as our choir master, he reflected on the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. Uh, specifically, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. And at last week's vestry meeting, uh, Chris Smythe, one of our vestry members, led us in a meditation inspired by Steve's letter on Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and the song Turn, 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 uh, made famous by the birds in 1965, originally by Pete Seeger. And as, as Steve noted in his letter, these turn out to be quite similar because the words of turn, turn, turn are taken almost entirely from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Now, you did not miss something. Ecclesiastes is not one of the readings for today, don't worry. Uh, but this is a day and a time turning points. It is the first official Sunday of summer, time of turning seasons. And of course, along with that goes the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, a turning point in our annual path around the sun. And uh, of course, in the time since I prepared this sermon, there has been an overturning of a Supreme Court decision which has ramifications uh, and consequences that has and will continue to send shockwaves throughout uh, American life. Now here in the church, as we settle into the long liturgical season of ordinary time, we find ourselves faced with other turning points. Last Sunday, we switched from the Gospel of John, which carried us through Eastertide and Pentecost and Trinity Sunday, to the Gospel of Luke, which will take us through ordinary time all the way until Advent. And today, within Luke's Gospel, we find an important turning point in Jesus' life and in Luke's narrative. Luke tells us, When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Now, up until this point in Luke, uh, Jesus has been born, uh, gets baptized much later, goes into the wilderness, 
returns, calls disciples, begins his ministry of healing, proclaiming, and of teaching. The location so far has been Galilee, a region in northern Israel or Palestine. Uh, and, and last week, Jesus leaves Galilee to go across the Sea of Galilee to the eastern uh, shore in what uh, Luke calls the country of the Gerasenes. Now, this is where the story of the Gerasene demoniac, which Brandon talked about last week, uh, takes place. And this is non-Jewish territory. So theologically, Jesus uh, is going into the Gentile world, going into the wider world. But now he has returned to Galilee, returned to Jewish territory, and has set his face to go to Jerusalem, the holy city, the, uh, the theological and geographical center of Jewish identity and culture. Now, to say that Jesus has set his face to go to Jerusalem is to say that he is headed, of course, to his death and resurrection, the center of his vocation, the, uh, the dual event that changed the world forever. Jesus here is firmly resolved. Another translation says that, that Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. We could say that Jesus has set his chin to the wind. You know, nothing can deter him or, or distract him. His, his existential energy is singularly directed towards this. Now, later in this passage, Jesus exchanges some words with some would-be disciples, and these remarks make it crystal clear that Jesus calls his disciples to share this existential commitment. Luke tells us that uh, to one he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So, uh, so much for Jesus and family values. Uh, it, I was on a way, I was away on a trip last weekend, and, and uh, in this place there were a lot of yard signs I saw that said, be kind. Uh, kind of seems like Jesus missed those. Uh, here he sounds kind of insensitive and uh, not very pastoral. Why does he speak this way? Well, it's important to remember uh, what we could call Hebraic hyperbole. That is, uh, that dramatic, exaggerated, figurative language was very common in the Jewish culture that, that Jesus lived in. It's all, it's all over the Hebrew Bible. And uh, actually, first let me bury my father, which is uh, the, the excuse uh, that one of these would-be disciples gives to Jesus, uh, was a colloquial expression in Jesus' day. It meant, uh, I'd like to do X, I'd really like to, to follow you, Jesus, I'm interested in that, but I have, I have other things going on, so I, I, you know, let me try to take care of those things first. Now, Jesus' response is, let other people worry about that. You follow me. And that is, of course, exactly what the apostles James, John, and Peter did earlier in the story when they dropped their nets uh, and followed Jesus. It seems that the challenge here is that Jesus not only calls us away from bad things, the sorts of things that we heard uh, enumerated in the reading from Galatians, uh, things that are, uh, if not bad, superfluous or unnecessary, it's that Jesus often calls us to leave good things, things that might even appear necessary for our lives in order to follow him. Now, in the case of James, John, and Peter, they left their livelihood and their family trade. They were fishermen. Jesus seems to be saying here, you must choose me even over good things, even over the best things. He is uncompromising. And that's not to say that God doesn't ever want us to have or enjoy good things. Of course not. Uh, but rather, whatever we do and whatever we have, whoever we are, is to be in response to God's calling, God's will for our lives. And not merely our or somebody else's idea of what we want or need or should have or should do or, or who we should be. Uh, St. Augustine once wrote, love God, and then do what you will. 
I think that is to say, if you put God first, everything else will fall into place. I believe this is a message worth hearing and worth heeding because uh, uh, so many of the people we most admire, who, who inspire us, who are fully alive and bring life to the world, uh, tend to have something in common. And that is that they are dedicated to one thing. They are very clear about what this is, and, and they are all in. You know, people like LeBron James, I mean, who knows how many uh, times he's, he's practiced his, his basketball throw. Uh, Cleveland Browns legend Jim Brown, Serena Williams, uh, Beyonce, and of course, visionaries and leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Desmond Tutu. When we are set on the one thing, we are much like Jesus who set himself resolutely towards his calling. Now, the philosopher Soren Kierkegaard wrote a book called Purity of Heart is to Will One Thing. So when we focus our lives toward the one thing, and for Kierkegaard, and of course for Jesus, this is God, uh, when we do this, it reorders everything else. Family, career, other priorities, other demands. Puts everything in its right place. Uh, to quote the band Radiohead. Now, this path is sometimes difficult and challenging, and it certainly comes, calls for some sacrifice. But the alternative, uh, what Kierkegaard called double-mindedness, is to live a confused and chaotic and conflicted life. This is perhaps why Jesus said no one can serve two masters. So may we choose the one thing and put God first. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, there is a cost to dis discipleship. So some things and some people in our lives might fall away when we do this, but, but Jesus calls us to have the faith and the courage to follow him anyway. What fills our time? What fills our days? Our calendars? What priorities and commitments do these things reflect? What things in our lives, even, even good things, might God be calling us to let go of, turn away from? What is standing in the way of us setting ourselves resolutely toward the one thing that God is calling us to? The one thing that will put everything else in perspective. Throughout all the seasons of our life, all the changes and chances of our turbulent times and world, may we turn again and again and again to the one who loves us, who calls us, and who leads us into life. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called to follow Jesus, let us offer our prayers for all people, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that we may hear God's call to discipleship and follow in faith and joy, let us pray to the Lord. For this parish that we may bear living witness to the commandment that we love our neighbors as ourselves, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, its leaders, and all in authority, that God will help us to walk in paths of peace and justice and seek an end to the epidemic of gun violence, let us pray to the Lord. For all who travel down roads of human uncertainty, suffering and separation, that they may arrive at places of safety and comfort, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are weary in body, mind, and spirit, that they may find wholeness and peace in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For all the departed, remembering especially Frederick Burke, Don Cairns, and Anne Heigard, that they may live for eternity in the power of the Spirit, Let us pray to the Lord. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary the God-bearer, Paul the Apostle, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. God. God of wisdom, hear the prayers we offer this day. Enrich our lives with the gifts of your spirit that we may follow the way of Christ and serve one another in freedom through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Good morning all and welcome to St. Paul's. It's good to be together. A special welcome to newcomers. We're glad you're here. There is a welcome card in the pew and if you're uh, joining us from home, there is a link um, below this video to the welcome card. We hope you'll fill it out and um, one of the clergy will reach out to you. We'd love to get to know you better, answer any questions you might have and welcome you into the life of this community. So welcome here today. And a special welcome to Leah Ramanelli. What a pleasure it is to have her here with us. Leah was our youth minister here at St. Paul's, and then she left St. Paul's to go through the discernment process for ordination to the priesthood. 
and she has now been ordained to the transitional diaconate in the Episcopal Church. You are first a transitional deacon for six months before you are ordained to the priesthood. So she is a transitional deacon. She will be starting ne next week at, at St. Luke's on the west side as their curate, um, one of um, St. Paul's partners. And it's just a thrill to be able to have her here today in her deacon role. So welcome, Leah. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> A few announcements next week, um, next Sunday at 6 p.m. I hope you'll join us out on the lawn for a patriotic carillon concert. Bring a picnic and make it an evening. And Bellwether together. We will be having our Bellwether family retreat for all ages um, in August, August Friday, August 12th through Sunday morning, August 14th. Registration is open. Please go ahead and sign up. We do need to let Bellwether know by mid-July how many people will be coming. So you can come for two nights or one night or just come for the day on sat Saturday. There's activities for all ages, including hay rides and swimming and arts and crafts and worship and some mores and more. So um, we hope you'll join us. Just see Sunday Notes or the website for more information. This week has been difficult for so many with the Supreme Court decision. While some celebrate, others are feeling emotions from disappointment to fear. I commend to you the statement made by presiding Bishop Michael Curry, drawing from his remarks, we as a church have tried carefully to be responsive both to the moral value of women having the right to determine their health care choices as well as the moral value of all life. Today's decision institutionalizes inequality because women with access to resources will be, be better able to exercise their moral judgment in ways that women without the same resources will not. The impact will be particularly acute for those who are impoverished or lack consistent access to health care services. We pray for all who may be harmed by this decision. Now more than ever, community is our hope. Listening with open hearts, loving and supporting and caring for one another. Let us draw strength from the eternal light of Christ. Let us continue seeking, serving, loving together. Now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. I now invite those who are joining us from home to say the sp prayer of spiritual communion found in the online bulletin. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. 
Amen.